So you you met you're, you're talking about making connections in it, you know, finding job opportunities. They're not online, really. Welcome back to the Mac Podcast, where we learn everything about real estate, business, entrepreneurship, and we just always challenge like conventional thinking. So my my flagship theme is unfollow the herd. And today I have a guest who is trying to innovate the young professional space. He's graduated from UND and he came out of school wanting to fire on all cylinders. He also knew that he wanted to be in an economic development space, helping companies and young professionals get connected in our community. Uh, He found a group called Greater Grand Forks Young Professionals, where he started as a part-time and he's been promoted all the way to executive director now. Guys, Welcome to the studio, Sam Jensen. Hey, thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here. This is a great space you have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, we threw together this studio. It's I, it's a weird space, but I, I like using, uh, we're maximizing everything we have here, and and I get to do podcasts in Grand Forks, which is, <laughs> which is awesome. Not many people are doing it. You know, there's more and more podcasts out there. Uh, I know we had a mix-up with Zoom versus in-person. I love to do in-person, um, and I wish everyone wanted to come to Grand Forks so I could do a lot right. more of these. Um, uh, so, you know, you just had me on talking in a Lunch and Learn, which, man, there was more people than I thought at one of these events. And, and you know, I'm not super familiar with a young professional. Uh, can you explain a little bit what is that, and, and why is it like, You know, why is it so important? Yeah, of course. Uh, So Greater Grand Forks Young Professionals, or as we like to call it, GGFYP, helps shorten it and easier to say, flows off the tongue a little bit easier. Uh, It started back in around 2008 when a group of interested individuals, uh, people like Keith Lund, people like Barry Wilford, and others who don't come to the top of my mind at the moment right now, uh, they contracted Next Generation Consulting, and they conducted an economic impact report. And they found that the flight of young professionals, when people graduate from UND or Northland and when they leave Grand Forks, that was, gonna, that was going to have an impact of about $150 million over the next four years. Wow. And that's uh, this young professional uh, workforce demographic taking their taxpayer money outside of the region, spending money on businesses that uh, aren't in the greater Grand Forks area. Uh, so they said, hey, let's raise enough money to fund a full-time executive director so that way we can have consistency in the events that we offer. Um, someone who's waking up every day thinking about innovative ways to keep young professional workforce demographic in Grand Forks and East Grand Forks. And the whole thesis of our organization is to convince people to stay in uh, the greater Grand Forks region, uh, get them involved early on in their career, or better yet, while they're still a student at UND or Northland or oh, during okay. their deployment at the Grand Forks Air Force Base. And hopefully with their involvement with our organization, they can uh, create new social circles, create professional connections, maybe get connected with uh, internships or early job opportunities. And then when the time comes for them to make a decision, do I want to move to Fargo, Minneapolis, wherever it might be, insert major metro area here, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Hopefully their involvement with GGFYP will uh, keep them tethered to the region and keep them in Grand Forks or East Grand Forks. So what, what kind of ages, like I was, you know, so I was new, I, I spoke at the event, uh, lunch and learn last week. And, um, I was surprised by the age groups. Like what, what is your perfect demographic? Is there, is there one? Yeah. Uh, so I'd say our target demographic, young professional is uh, pretty clear that we yeah. target people in between the ages of 18 and 40 years old. Yeah. Uh, those are the people that we generally see attend our events and kind of the people that we target with our marketing efforts. Uh, but in the past year, we went through a strategic planning process and we decided uh, both of the terms in our, the name of our organization, both young and professional can be seen to be non-inclusive. Uh, okay. So we decided we no longer want to define uh, young in terms of age, but rather mindset. You know, if someone's young Ooh. in their career, uh, learning a new skill, maybe it's a stay-at-home uh, mom re-entering the workforce. Yeah, uh, We believe everyone stands to benefit from getting involved in their community, getting to meet other ambitious individuals, and uh, creating new professional connections as well. And then the latter half of that professional, some people view uh, GGFYP as a group of bankers, attorneys, engineers, white collar okay. individuals. Uh, but we're really trying to fight against that optic and we view professionals, anyone who's good at what they do and they express the desire to get better at it every day by participating in our uh, professional development programs. Well, you had me at 18 to 40. I just turned 35. So now <laughs> I, I can consider myself young. Um, no, I. I awesome program like a great inspiring like i'm i'm glad someone is 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 pushing this and i'm glad you're full time doing this yes sir um what are what's some of your challenges in in uh in the program like growing it or uh, do you have any or 
how do you inspire the really young ones too to like come up into this? Yeah, I think uh, social involvement has kind of been in the decline, uh, not only in Grand Forks in North Dakota, but uh, throughout the nation in okay. the last 50 years, you know, as technology has advanced, um, people, you know, would rather stay at home and watch a movie on Netflix than go out in the community uh, to a group of 20 to 40 people and network. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's kind of the core issue for us is just convincing people to attend our events, right? Uh, yeah. We had a great event with you at our Lunch and Learn. Yeah. Uh, a lot of that because you're a recognizable figure and you had an interesting topic to speak on that our members could learn from. Yeah. Uh, but oftentimes it's a struggle. We're scratching and clawing to get 20 to 40 people to attend our events. Okay. Uh, we consistently do see that amount of people. We have 20 to 40 people attend our events. Just last week, we had 50 people at the Empire Arts Center. Wow. Uh, but it's just uh, making sure that people uh, have a return. Like, what do I get out of it when I attend these events? And that's kind of our major struggle of making sure that we help people get connected into the social group once they attend our events. Sometimes right. it can be intimidating to show up to uh, somewhere and with 20 to 40 people and you don't know anyone, right? Yeah. And uh, some people view GGFYP as a group where everybody already has their established social circles. And when I show up to mm. an event, sometimes it's tough to penetrate that social circle. Uh, so for us, we're just trying to introduce all of our new members, uh, getting them introduced to other people who can help them get a foot in the door in their desired industry uh, cool. and help them create new friends through our group. So I'd say uh, event attendance is the biggest issue for us. Even though we're doing a good job of it, uh, sometimes it takes up a lot of my time and a lot oh. of personal uh, texts and yeah. uh, DMs to people to get them to attend events. Well, it's, it's uncomfortable. Um, you know, it, it, networking is still like not my favorite thing to do. I would... I would rather speak at every event instead of having to know for anybody. I think I was listening to Grant Cardone. He's like, instead of being on stage, he's like, I need to be in the crowd because that's where deals are getting done. When I go onto the stage, he's like, nothing is, you know, people approach me with questions, but that's it. I'm not getting deals done. Mm -hmm. um, and I think networking is so underrated, especially in person. And, and I think, co well, obviously COVID made it more awkward or that now you don't even have to do it. Right. Um, so what, you know, what do you tell like some of the young professionals? I think this, everyone, like, how do you be a better networker? I want to know. <laughs> how do you, I'm not calling you the expert, but right. you, you, what do you, what, you got to give us some tidbits on like, yeah, how, how do I approach your program? Go in with 30 people. I'm thinking about like Jen behind the screen here a little bit too. It's like, how does she just like go in with, with some confidence that she can, you know, is there some go-to questions or? Oh man, you're uh, putting me on the spot. Uh, yeah, by no yeah here we go. By no Testing definition, the <laughs> by no definition, would I consider myself an expert in networking? In <laughs> fact, I pick up on tips and tricks from people who I look up to. Okay, uh, as well-established professionals in Grand Forks and East Grand Forks, and try pick up on some of the strategies that they utilize to kind of make their presence felt in a room. Mm. But some strategies that have worked for me is just going into a room, going into an event with the purpose of. Hey, I know this individual is going to be there. I'm going to make it a point to introduce myself to them and make an impression on them. So later down the line, when I reach out to them, they can put a face to the name and would be more apt to sit down and have a 20 to 30 minute conversation with me over coffee. Uh, you know, just going in with the purpose of, hey, I want to meet this individual, learn more about what they do in this industry, because this might be the next step I want to take in my career. Uh, just going in with a mindset of almost a checklist of, I want to talk to this person. I want to talk to this mm. person. I want to talk to this person. But also making sure that uh, if you're talking to someone who's not necessarily on your list, uh, don't do the usual scanning the room looking for someone else to talk uh, to. Always making sure to stay completely engaged with the person that you're networking with, listening to what they have to say, and uh, fully investing in every conversation that you have and mm -hmm. not making it apparent that you're just looking for the next person to kind of jump onto. Yeah, yeah, hey, that you nailed it, <laughs> Sam. That was good. Um, and uh, you know, you go into these like I, uh, I go into these big rooms like we're gonna go to Wealth Con, which is like 1,200 people there. So you're like, oh, okay, uh, you know the don'ts. Um, you want to be uh, interesting, not always just interested, right? Like you mm -hmm. got to come up with something and it's like, what do you do? What do you do? How do you, you know? I think pre-planning it though, that's where people fail. They just go into the room and it's like, oh gosh, <laughs> like right. Some I'm people sweating are sweating already. Free food or the yeah. free drink, and they I'm hang gonna, out by the bar the whole time. Yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> stand here and look at the corner. Uh, yeah. I, I'm guilty of it, man. That's it's it's not fun. It's it's awkward. But you, every time I've done it, I have people that I've learned at the 10x conferences and and networking. These people are part of your life longer. It's just that awkward half hour conversation where you don't know if you're going to have interest. Maybe you will. Maybe you won't. Mm -hmm. Maybe the conversation will go further. But there's some of my partners today. Like I, I talk to these people 
you know, they're nationwide now. So it's like, it is incredible that networking and if you can do it on a local presence, if you're in Grand Forks, you'll probably run into them again. Um, and you know, you don't, you don't want, you know, I shouldn't say enemies in the town, but like you want to, you want to network with everybody. Like we're all here for each other's success. Um, you know, and, and I think in networking, it just helps a lot. Like, I don't know, it's changed, it's changed my life and what I think about it. Um, so what, what's your background? Like, what's your story to like, you, well, I know that you went to UND, but what, like, where, where'd you grow up? Where'd you? Uh, so I grew up in uh, Valley City. Uh, I've always felt affectionate towards Grand Forks. Both of my uh, parents grew up in Grand Forks. So okay. when the decision came to, uh, for me to decide where I wanted to go to school, uh, it became apparent it's UND, NDSU. If you go there, you're taken out of the will, so to speak. Uh, so grew up in Valley City, came to Grand Forks a lot. Uh, my grandparents were pretty heavily involved with UND Athletics in terms of the Champions Club and helping uh, get the Ralph Ingolstead Arena set up. Oh, wow. So I've always felt very affectionate towards UND, especially the athletics program. So the decision was pretty easy for me to come up to Grand Forks. Uh, I came up here. I got degrees in political science and business economics, uh, wanted cool. to go into economic development uh, during my last semester. So I did a victory lap. I graduated in December of 2021. Uh, I started to get nervous. I wanted a job. I'm like, I don't have any jobs lined up. I really haven't had any uh, really lucrative internships that yeah. I can put on my resume to speak of. Uh, but then I was attending a community event and I was lucky enough to run into Becca Kruger at the Grand Forks Region EDC. And this is part of the um, saying that I like to uh, repeat oftentimes where it's the best jobs that you're looking for aren't found online when you're looking for open positions in the mm -hmm. community, uh, but rather they're found when you're having in-person conversations with people at community events. And then they suggest to you, you should apply for this position. I think you would be good at it. And that's exactly what happened with Becca. She told me that she worked at the mm -hmm. Grand Forks Region EDC. And selfishly, I wanted to set up a conversation with her, hoping that it would uh, end up in an internship opportunity. Uh, but she did me one better by suggesting that I apply for this position as the executive director of the Greater Grand Forks Young Professionals uh, because we do view ourselves as an economic development-based nonprofit uh, mm -hmm. rather than the business side of things. We focus more so on the workforce side of things, like yep. I mentioned, yep. convincing people to stay in Grand Forks, helping them with their professional development and connecting them to job opportunities in the region. Yeah. So that's kind of my background. I uh, went to UND for four and a half years and that final semester was kind of scrambling, looking for a job opportunity and the perfect opportunity kind of landed in my lap. Uh, started off as the program coordinator. So during my final semester, I was working part-time while I was still finishing up my degrees okay. at UND. Uh, and then once I graduated, they made decision, the decision to promote me to the executive director, uh, which is a full-time position, 40 hours a week. Most of my time is spent with fundraising, trying to gr uh, get mm. more sponsors for the organization, yeah. which is in turn uh, leads to more members who can attend our events okay. and uh, become more involved in the community in that aspect. Uh, but that's my background. Yeah. And this uh, opportunity has just been perfect for me. It's allowed me to meet a lot of well-respected community and business leaders such as yourself. And it's really allowed me to network with some very influential people in the greater Grand Forks mm -hmm. community. And hopefully it will lead to a, a great opportunity for whatever comes next. Yeah, you got it. Wow. Nailed it. That's awesome. No, I, I love that story. So you, you met, you're, you're talking about making connections in it, you know, finding job opportunity. They're not online really. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like right. you, you, uh, obviously you applied for the job that you had here and you had to get accepted, I'm sure by a board or something. Right. Yes. And, um, how do, how do they approach that? So that's just something in networking. Is that importance of networking or is that the importance of, you know, is everybody always looking or like, I mean, is that just how you stumbled upon this? I think role? it's the importance of always networking, always having a conversation, being curious about what other people do in the community. Yeah. Uh, Becca Kruger was actually at the Art on the Red is the community event that I met her at. And she had a booth as an artist. And I just had a conversation asking her yeah. what she did for a living. She said she worked at the EDC, but then always looking, you know, being intentional with your networking. Like I said earlier, having the intent of looking for a job opportunity at the time, an internship opportunity. And just knowing that someone always has something out there to provide. Um, so the importance of networking, just getting to know people, mm -hmm. um, even if it's not transactional. Uh, Becca right. was rather transactional. She was a, oh. able to set me up with conversations with people who <laughs> were very important and led me to the direction that I'm going in right now. Yep. But even if you don't think you're going to get anything out of it, uh, stay connected with them, get their contact information, match with them on LinkedIn. So then down the road, uh, you know, if you're in a position like I'm in and if they work at 
an organization that isn't in an industry that I'm looking to get involved in. Uh, at least I can reach out to their business and see if they would want to be involved with GGFYP or further down the road if they have an open position that they think I might be good at. Uh, they'll keep their ear to the ground and kind of keep me in mind moving forward. And that's something okay. I say in a lot of my conversations. Um, not that I'm looking to move on from my position with GGFYP uh, terribly urgently, uh, but something that I'll remind people if they're working in an industry that I, I have expressed interest in, I'll tell them to keep their ear to the ground. And if they think there's any positions that I might be good for, uh, please shoot it my way and I'd be happy to check it out. Cool. No, that's awesome. Check that out. I uh, I kind of had another question about, well, it might be networking. It might be looking for your next job. It might be whatever. You don't know who you're connecting with. I always talk about providing other people value. You know, it's kind of a give, give, give type world we live in here. And then at some point you'll get, right? Like, right. how do you give, you know, you met some higher people. Like, how did you give value? You know what I mean? I, I sometimes lock in that myself. It's like, I'll meet some famous, whatever. They, they've done more things than I have. I feel like I have nothing to offer this person, <laughs> right? Like, do you approach those situations any different or, or you know, even with Becca, how you, how you approach that conversation or was it purely a conversation? Purely conversational. Uh, oftentimes, there's not a lot of value myself as an individual can offer these people who are in positions of uh, leadership, either in the community or in their respective business. Uh, but the organization I work for can sure provide value, uh, especially in my current position with the Greater Grand Forks Young Professionals. If I'm talking with someone who's a market president at a bank or they're in leadership with the company that they work for, I can ask to sit down and have a 20 to 30 minute conversation with them about GGFYP, hopefully uh, add their company on as a corporate sponsor sponsor, uh, which in return would allow all of their employees to register as members and attend all of our events at no cost to them. So that's kind of uh, the value that I can provide uh, as an organization, not necessarily individually. Uh, when I talk about the value that I can provide uh, some influential people that I meet in the community uh, on an individual level, oftentimes I think about the network that I've been able to acquire uh, through mm. my involvement with GGFYP, all the people that I've been able to meet, all of our members. Um, so oftentimes if they're saying, hey, we're looking for an accountant, this role has been open for this amount of time. Yeah. Uh, my brain will automatically start thinking about all the people who I've met who are wanting to enter into that industry. And then I'll just forward along that contact information. Gotcha. So even though that's a kind of an individual benefit I can provide, uh, it's still more of an organizational benefit because I got to know these people through my involvement with GGFYP. Gotcha. No, that's, that's, that's awesome. So what, have you had any uh, real good success stories? You've been in this for a little while now. What, you know, have you, have you had like specific people, you don't have to name the specific people, but like some of the outcomes that have happened from, from yeah. the program? Yeah. Something I'm very excited about, uh, just this last year through our professional development committee, uh, we started a community mentorship program and that's where we had people who were still early in their career. Uh, we had a good mixture of UND Northland students and recent college graduates register for this program. Yeah. And then we matched them with established professionals in Grand Forks mm. and East Grand Forks. And the structure of the program was they were supposed to meet in person three times. Uh, and uh, the mentor was supposed to provide the mentee with their Rolodex of professional contacts that they've ac acquired throughout their years of experience mm. and help them get their foot in the door in whatever desired industry they want to get involved in. Uh, and then one of these mentorship uh, mentee matches uh, actually ended up with an internship opportunity. Uh, the mentor works out at Grand Sky. Uh, he works and then the, the person who he was mentoring wanted to get involved in the UAS industry. Uh, so that was a perfect match for mentor mentee and uh, conversations ended up happening the night that we had our kickoff uh, event where the mentors got to meet their mentees. Yeah. Uh, they went across the street to Ellie's Ivy, sat down and had a conversation, uh, oh, cool. scheduled a tour out at Grand Sky, and eventually it ended up with an internship opportunity. So that was kind of the return. Uh, hopefully that will make him affectionate towards the business that offered him the internship and the organization that helped make it possible. Yeah, that's that's awesome, man. No, that's great. I uh, you always love the the good stories. That you you got to have good things that come through this. I was like, man, do I get to put my, like my HR department in the young professional? You know what I mean? Like, uh, you don't have any HR people in there, do you? <laughs> we have, we have a few HR people. Yeah, a few HR professionals. We have a wide variety of professions yeah. involved. That's all right. Well, maybe you get your next career from there, and there might be some HR people there. Uh, yeah, I, uh, you know, of course, I talk about real estate and I talk about business a lot. Of course, I own businesses in Grand Forks. So, um, but I think, you know, you go talk, like, you go talk at these events or you try to get people attracted to, like, my whole thing last week was 
not call not not following just conventional thinking and following the herd. That's you know, and, and mine's all real estate investing, um, just not following the common path of life. You can have a great job that you love, but maybe just have some un, un, you know not conventional investment paths. That's what I tell most of you. It's like you can have an ordinary job, just don't follow the same path with your investing career. Use a little different. The four hundred and one k match is not going to make sure that you're going to retire with plenty of money in your account. Should you take the match? Of course, <laughs> but make sure you're doing something outside of that. So I, I had a great time talking to them, and and um, yeah, no, I, I really enjoy the program. I think it's it's awesome, and I I think it needs to be fired up even more in this community. Um, and and I'm glad you're you're doing it. Um, what's one of your biggest fears? I'm going to throw you off a sideball. <laughs> Uh, biggest fears. Uh, wow. That's a great question. I'm terrified of heights, uh, but I would imagine that you're asking this question through a professional lens. Um, my biggest fear is that well, you just I, give me the Sam, whatever <laughs> comes to mind. It could be snakes and spiders. I don't care. Snakes, spiders, heights, yeah. you know, the dark, all that, you know, give you the, the basic answer. Yeah, you but, just give me the Sam answer. Uh, but professionally, uh, which uh, sometimes can keep me up at night is, uh, what's my next step, right? Uh, mm. the executive director of DJFYP, I've had some great predecessors, uh, who have went on to do some amazing things that have significantly increased their, uh, income on an annual basis. So they've mm. used DJFYP this position is a significant launching pad. Yeah. Uh, so sometimes I, uh, I worry that I'm going to get, uh, I don't want to use the word stuck because uh, I'm always, you know, improving as a professional and uh, developing um, through my position. But mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I fear that I'm going to get stuck and be in this position for five plus years and uh, really not uh, giving myself the opportunity to grow as a professional. Mm -hmm. uh, so right now I'm uh, just kind of thinking about what my next step is, where I want to go next in my career. And hopefully that's a great spot. And uh, I'm connected with some individuals who can serve as some pretty solid professional mentors for me. Yeah. What, what, What's what's going to make you feel stuck, or what? How do how do you overcome that? Uh, uh, by actively looking for the next step, it would probably be how I overcome that. And okay. That's something I've been avoiding because I really do appreciate my job right now with mm -hmm. GGFYP. It's allowed me to meet some incredible people. Yeah, I've created some great friendships throughout my involvement with uh, GGFYP and the yeah. organization. Uh, but just actively looking for the next step, having conversations with people who are involved with GGFYP, our stakeholders, people on our advisory board, um, you know, using them as kind of a, a bouncing pad for ideas in terms of, hey, this is uh, mm -hmm. the industry that I'm looking to get into. Who should I talk to? So I should probably start having those conversations earlier rather than later. Um, and the thought of me being stuck would probably be a uh, complacency if I was just uh, content with where I'm at. Yeah. And that's something that I don't feel and I'm happy. If I ever do start to feel content and I'm like, I'm going to retire as the executive director of GGFYP, they have an executive director who's 70 years old. Yeah. Uh, obviously that's not going to happen, yeah. but uh, that would be uh, the thought of me being stuck is when I start feeling content and complacent. What, uh, how old are you? I'm 24. Yes, sir. You're feeling stuck already. <laughs> Dang. Well, I think there's plenty of people listening that uh, you know, if I was a 24 year old stud, can you take the program, um, and, and push it to another level? Is there, is there anywhere else you could push that to? Yeah. Yeah. I think that there's uh, we should never feel complacent as an organization in terms of, uh, the impact that we're making in the community. Uh, there's some interesting, um, census data when you compare 2010 to 2020 that shows that uh, our organization has made a significant impact on mm -hmm. retaining that workforce demographic of 18 to 18 to 40. Yeah. Uh, but we can always take it to the next level by adding more sponsors, adding more members. Uh, right now, our membership is at 280 people. Wow. And that's people who have registered in the last 12 months officially on our website by filling out the membership registration form. So I think that's actually kind of an underrepresentation because we have some people who have been members of our organization for multiple years, but they're just unaware of the fact that they have to renew their membership on an annual level. Um, some areas where I think we could improve on is our relationship with the Grand Forks Air Force Base. Uh, mm -hmm you know, getting some more involvement to help them get more connected in the community. Yeah. Um, they've identified to us that it's a massive priority for them to get their airmen and women more involved in Greater Grand Forks. Uh, and they cool. would like to use GGFYP as a vehicle to help uh, get them into positions of leadership and just yeah. get them more involved and feel more affectionate about the region in which they live in. No, I love it, man. I'll stop uh, picking on you a little bit here. <laughs> no now. worries. That's, it. That's um, why I'm here. <laughs> yeah, no, I think it's good. And a lot of young people can use this. Like if you're feeling stuck and you're like, the pinnacle of, you know, the executive director of this, it's like, 
I don't think you're ever stuck in life. It's just how you, you don't worry. You're not getting complacent. I, <laughs> I promise you, I don't think you'll even allow yourself to do that, Sam. Um, I think many people can though, and many people get comfortable. I don't think you want to keep yourself comfortable. Like you want to, you like the, uh, I just sense the feeling that you like to be uncomfortable, <laughs> you know, yep. and, and keep growing yourself and, and, you know, which is, which is great. That's an entrepreneurial, um, you know, not everyone's born with that. So, uh, you know, you keep fighting through, I'm sure something's going to come to fruition, right? Yeah. Like yeah. you, you love what you do, um, and, and do it the best you can. I think you get in the right networks. You're going to get in those conversations. That's why you have this. It's, it's going to happen. Right. And, pushing yourself on being uncomfortable. Right. Or, yeah. And let me turn the tables on you. Uh, uh, have you ever had a position where you felt complacent? You know, at our Lunch and Learn, you talked about when you were working at Mac Construction before the inception of Mac Capital. Mm -hmm. um, I would imagine that that was probably a period in your life where you uh, wanted to kind of take the next step. Obviously, you weren't complacent. <coughs> um, mm -hmm. But has there ever been a period where you've just been content with uh, how things are with your career and your wealth building strategies? And how did you move past that to take yourself to the next level? I think I, I'm never content <laughs> and I was built without patience. You could ask any of my employees. I, I just expect a lot from myself, but I always expect more, right? I live in the gap, the gap and the gain. I have a book over there that, you know, you live in this, in this world where you hit a level and then boom, it instantly moves. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You were the executive director and now it moved, right? Like it, it, it's going to keep moving. And, you know, it might be, it might be, uh, it's really a problem, right? Like you, you got to feel yourself, but you can't always feel like you got to, I got to look back and reflect, okay, this is how far I came. Um, how did I overcome it? I did feel stuck though. As an employee, I, I felt like an employee. I, I had a business. It was Mac Construction. I started it from 2010 to like 2016. The only thing I knew though was how to pour concrete. I was my best person. Like I was the best concrete pourer. I controlled everything. I ran everybody. Uh, the problem was if I tipped over in the mud, like, that's probably where it's going to end. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> right, the company's yeah, going to yeah. end there. Uh, and, and, and so when you do that, though, you get a lot of anxiety. You're like, oh man, I'm stuck. What do I do? You, uh, and what I developed was, um, well, I developed anxiety and I developed <laughs> like panic attacks. Um, but I got really curious about what's next. How do, how, how does somebody like own a business and then like, like run the business instead of like do everything in the business, you know? So then I got like super curious. So then I, I read, I probably read a hundred books in two years. They say not to do that. Um, but I wanted to consume <laughs> everything. I was just like curious George out there. Like I need to know why the wealthy are doing this. I needed to know why, how to run a business. And, and, and I figured out a lot of things that's like, Oh, why, why are the, all these CEOs reading books all the time? Well, they're just trying to unlock two nuggets from the book, right? Like I figured every book's kind of got like a couple good ones. And, um, I got really curious and then all of a sudden I'm like, wow, I need to like keep more money and I need to invest and I need to like get my business to work for me. I, my business owned me. I was just really an employee that ran the whole ship. And as soon as I was done, it wasn't worth, <clears throat> business wasn't worth anything. Because as soon as I tipped out, you know, it was only it was only me. It's like a coaching business. Well, if it's just Sam Jensen coaching, it's like, okay, well, I want Sam to coach me. And <laughs> it's only can it get as big as as how many people you can push through it. So um, that was where my concrete business was. And I, I just decided that um, I had to take a different route, which I actually lost. You lose profit margin from that because mm -hmm. now you start stepping back and you start delegating. You start leveraging your time. You're like, wow, that was a mistake. I had to allow them to make mistakes in the field, though. Because I had have panic attacks of like everything being perfect. Like the edges are too low. The forms don't look straight. The cutting, you screwed that up. You know, it's like mm -hmm. I had to let people learn and delegate and learn the whole process of that. And then investing, I had to learn how to keep more money through real estate investing. And, and all that stuff is compounded now to where today I'm, you know, I could die tomorrow and the business will run, which I feel grateful for. Um, I own real estate that literally will take care of my family well past me being gone. You know what I mean? And so right. that, that's how I went from being really stuck and just curious, you know, I got really curious and kind of led me down a path. So I don't know. I, you know, I'm not going to resort it to a bunch of books, but it's, <laughs> it's that, that entrepreneurial mindset of never being complacent yeah. and uh, looking at the position you're in right now and saying, how can I improve on where I'm currently at? 
it's all I'm trying to do, man. And then, and then things about like me now, it's like, I'm creating content. I'm doing the things I'm doing. I, I, I love doing it. It's a side hustle though. This isn't like how I make money. Um, I'd be very broke if I was doing <laughs> that, but I learned that you need to be doing it for the future. So you, you kind of get up into new levels of new people and, and, and that's what I tell everyone. If you feel complacent, find a mentor two years ahead of you exactly where you want to be. Pay them money. Uh, you, you could, you, I don't know how much you spent to go to college, but I know it was a lot. <laughs> if you can pay that mentor and they can skip time for you, you will get more done in that six months to a year than you would ever have. And you will miss all the mistakes that most entrepreneurs need to make because you do not want to be the smartest, you know what I mean? Like, you want to ask a lot of questions. You don't want to be the, the smartest person on, and like, I know it all, <laughs> right? Like be the optimistic person, like ask questions, be vulnerable. Right. Um, and then when I started real, I had an ego when I was pouring car, I'm the best in town and um, <laughs> whatever, you know, it's like, have you lost your touch a little bit now that uh, you're not pouring on a weekly basis? I'm I'm not going to admit that. <laughs> okay. I, I'll, I'll go out and pour concrete next to anyone. Um, <laughs> You know, as I age, things get a little harder, though. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a lot of fun doing it. Sometimes we have a, um, with usually like the foreman, they'll play a game or whatever. One of them will hit something and then they'll swap jobs with me for the, actually, I think they get the day off that we should do the job swap, though. <laughs> um, and yeah, they get the day off and I take their job and run their crew. Um, which I actually have a lot of fun doing. <laughs> yeah. So it's no, nice it's fun. It's right. fun. But yeah, that's, you know, that's kind of how I've overcame Right. A lot. And hopefully it helps some entrepreneurs. I think it's don't ever feel stuck. It's just keep getting more and more curious, which I can tell you are. You're right. like, I don't, I think I'm stuck in what I'm doing. It's like, I want to be here and I can't be, but I got to humble myself, reflect where I came. You're only 24, reflect where you came. You're going to have big things happen to you. Yeah. yeah. And I like your point about mentorship and that's a strategy that I've employed. Um, I, I reach out to individuals, <clears throat> uh, not necessarily paying for their mentorship, but yeah. I'll just ask them, hey, can we grab lunch or coffee once a month? You yeah. know, I have uh, our former president on the, board of directors for Grand Forks Young Professionals. Yeah. Kevin Hatcher works at the EDC, yeah. a position I would like to see myself in one day. Cool. So, you know, I grab lunch with him on an occasional basis, hear what he does on a day-to-day -day basis. Other development professionals in Grand Forks, like Bill yes. Proctor, the president and CEO at the Downtown Development Association, mm -hmm. uh, just learning from the strategies that they talk about. And that can help me improve myself as a professional. And like you said, I don't go into these conversations, you know, acting like I'm the expert. You know, I've reached some budgetary goals yeah. with sponsorship, uh, here and there, but I still have a lot to learn and going into these conversations humble, knowing that I have a lot to know from these people who have a lot more uh, career experience than I do. Well, you, you humble yourself. You ask good questions. You're, it is funny though, how many like reach out to a CEO, like these people are willing to help you, right? Like yeah. they like people when they ask questions, but no one asks them the questions. Precisely. It's like, if you see the guy, like you want to be in two years, like, or maybe even 20 years, Reach out to them. Just ask them. I guarantee you'll get a it's response. It's kind of like the college professor where nobody ever goes to their office hours, yep. although they really like it when you do go to their office hours because they're like, I have these office hours for a reason. Please come <clears> in and talk to me and ask questions. And I think it's kind of the same way, especially in Grand Forks. I think the business leadership here is very open, yep. uh, very willing to sit down with people regardless of what your position you're in. You could be an intern. You could be working... Uh, I, I work at the Icon Sports Center on the weekends driving Zamboni. You could be doing that. And yeah. You could reach out to the market president at Alaris Financial, Chris Wolf, and he'd be more than happy to sit down with you and have right. a conversation about potential future career opportunities and what you can do to, you know, make your resume more um, uh, look better to people for potential employers. Yeah. Yeah. So put no egos ask questions, be curious. These people are willing to help. I almost guarantee it. Anyone that reaches out to me within the Grand Forks area, like I'm helping. If it's nationwide, sometimes I get lost in the mix, <laughs> but if they're curious in Grand Forks, I want to help as many people as I can. Um, the more entrepreneurs we have here, the more businesses, more things that'll thrive and more young professionals that'll be able to come up. Right. So Rising I, tide lifts all boats. Yeah. Um, Let's talk a little bit about Grand Forks then. Um, you put me on the spot on the stage about asking, you know, where, where do we go? How do we innovate Grand Forks? Um, I'm curious, you, you hang out, you know, Kevin and Todd, and, and you, this is always the talk, right? Like, what's some of, you know, what's some of the challenges and what's some of the good things that you see in the future? Um, kind of where we're headed right now. Like, where's Grand Forks as a whole? 
Right. Yeah. So the challenges aspect of things, uh, workforces challenges that uh, every company deals with. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you deal with it on the construction aspect of things. I know every service company, you know, food service, retail companies are uh, struggling with workforce aspect Mm -hmm. of things. And that's where GGFYP fills in, right? We're obviously not going to solve all the workforce issues that are plaguing uh, the greater Grand Forks region, but we'd like to think we can help provide some support in terms of, you know, there's a handful of people who are not necessarily aware of all the opportunities that await in Grand Forks, but we can help open their eyes to everything that there is to do and all the industries that you're available to work in. And then you talk about uh, what I'm excited about with Grand Forks. I mean, yeah. I'm 24 years old and I'm an executive director and I'm, I'm not the only one. I know other people who are my age who have uh, pretty influential positions in the community. Yeah. I think that that's pretty unique to Grand Forks as opposed to even Fargo, just 60 miles south, where if you're young and if you want to get involved, uh, you will, uh, someone will create a seat at the table for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, as opposed to if you live in Fargo, Minneapolis, for example, you might have to put in a little bit more work, you know, uh, spend 10 to 15 years in a lower entry level position before people start to respect your opinions enough to invite you to the seat to the table to make some pretty influential decisions as in regards to what's happening in the community. So that's something I appreciate a lot about Grand Forks is the leaders are very open and willing to hear from the younger uh, younger, prof- younger professional demographic in the workforce as well mm-hmm. as students uh, because they know that that's our future. Those are the people who are going to be taking the positions that are open and leading the companies in the region. And uh, another thing that I'm excited about is obviously the UAS industry. I mean, you Mm. talk about uh, industries that are up and coming all throughout the country. Uh, Grand Forks is, uh, I saw this this last week, we're considered the Silicon Valley for UAS. Uh, You know, all the development that's happening. Uh, a, a quote that Keith Lund used during the Grand Forks Region EDC, their annual dinner, he said, it certainly helps. Uh, it's beneficial to be in a state that's under 1 million people and have no mountains. So it's wide open skies. Really helps with the UAS development uh, yeah. in this region. And uh, so just trying to get connected with all these very brilliant people. I was at an event uh, just earlier this week called Up Next, where we feature uh, local entrepreneurs on a monthly basis. Oh, okay. Ask them questions about what their journey's been like, what struggles have they went through, what trials mm. and tribulations they've went through to get to where they're at today. Uh, and this last month was focused on UAS. So we had Ned Tabbitt from Metalark Air, uh, Metalark Aircraft and Tommy Kenville from Eyesight Drones. And uh, just hearing them talk about the UAS industry and mm-hmm. how it's grown in Grand Forks is truly inspiring. I mean, these people uh, invite other companies into the region, share yeah. trade secrets with each other when theoretically they're competitors, but they realize, uh, I used the quote earlier, uh, a rising tide lifts all boats. You know, if you're helping out the other competitors in the industry, helping them get integrated, uh, that helps the workforce in the long run. They're bringing employees to Grand Forks and say they don't like their boss, right? You know, uh, and they just bought a house in Grand Forks. Now what are they going to do? Well, they have all these other UAS industries in uh, Grand okay. Forks to choose from to go work for. So that's something that I'm very excited about. Uh, all the up and coming industries, the development that's taking place downtown. Yeah. Uh, so I work out of the 701 co working space in downtown Grand Forks, yeah. and every day I drive past the the construction of the Olivan, that boutique hotel that's mm-hmm. coming up. Uh, the Beacon, which is yeah. right uh, downtown there, right over the Columbia Bridge or yeah. the Demers Bridge. Very exciting developments taking place. Franklin on 4th. So downtown Grand Forks is is on the up. I mean, it's going to be unrecognizable to people uh, on this uh, one year from today, I'd imagine. Yeah. So there's a lot of exciting things happening in Grand Forks. And for people who are eager and want to be a part of it, that's something else that's very special about it. If you see all the exciting things that are happening in our region, and if you want to be a part of it, it's just as simple as reaching out to someone who you think has influence and they're more than happy to have a conversation with you or at least set you up with someone who might be able to help you uh, get your foot in the door in that industry or help make decisions. Right. Now, what? why do you think... Um I get asked this a lot. Why why is there so much development just downtown? (laughs) Uh, I think that's, uh, you know, obviously the Main Street initiative. I think that's kind of the reasoning behind a lot of that. Doug Burgum's uh, Main Street initiative to kind of uh, liven up downtowns throughout North Dakota. And Grand Forks has always kind of had a romantic downtown. You know, it has some great architecture, some old buildings that are cool to look at and uh, Mm -hmm. be immersed in when you're walking downtown. But I think just kind of having a, a congested space for people to have events is mm. great for the community. Uh, walkability, livability, quality of life, all mm. these are kind of buzzwords that people use to talk about how we can enhance uh, downtown Grand yeah. Forks. 
And uh, all the developments that are taking place down there are surely helping with that. I mean, the new Hugo's grocery store, right? Yeah. Uh, if you live downtown now, I mean, you probably don't even need a car to get around, especially this time of year. Uh, <laughs> don't ask me that same question in January or yeah. December. Yeah. Uh, but this time of the year, I mean, you can go to the grocery store. You know, you have all these different places where you can socialize with other people. There's axe throwing. There's obviously a multitude of places to get a beverage with friends. Yeah. And I think, you know, just emphasizing uh, one area of town where we can really focus on the development of that. And it's kind of a go-to landing pad for people who are coming to Grand Forks for the first time. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, the immediate thought that comes to their mind is let's go downtown and you can spend an entire day down there. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, no, I, I just, I get asked that question all the time. It's like, well, I, you know, I, you're incentivized through opportunities, different investment strategies, why they're, why they're able. And, um, you know, the states get to dictate where they want to promote growth. Um, I think Grand Forks though is, yeah, I, there's a lot going on downtown. It's right. uh, it's, yeah, it's pretty cool. What there's a, yeah, there's a lot going on downtown right now, which is which is good to see. I think, uh, Doug. I mean, all the the life of the town is usually like he views as the downtowns being you right. Know, and that Beacon Space, I hope that will be a good event center moving forward because yeah. it's uh, being built by the same company that has the lights down in West Fargo. Yeah. And I know that they'll have outdoor hockey games, right? I'm a huge sports fan, so I like oh, hockey, yeah. baseball, football, all the traditional American sports that people like to get involved oh, yeah. in. Uh, so, you know, I'd love to see some concerts <laughs> in that space. I'd yeah. love to see some outdoor hockey games, you know, bring people downtown who usually wouldn't come downtown. Maybe it's a, a parent of a student who plays for their Red River hockey team and they have no reason to ever come downtown because they work on 32nd Street, right? As mm -hmm. far away as possible from downtown. Uh, but, you know, some activities that drive people down there and help with the commerce of the small businesses that operate down there. Yeah. Oh, that'd be awesome. Um, well, I got a few questions for you as we wrap this up. Um, <clears throat> well, um, so what would your 75 year old self tell yourself today? Since I, I know that you answered this a little different, uh, <laughs> earlier, but I want to, I want to dive deeper into this. What would uh, 75 year old Sam tell 24 year old Sam? You got it. Uh, I would tell myself to always be curious, uh, learn from people who you respect as professionals, people who you view as mentors, uh, always ask them questions about what has worked for them in the past to help them get to where they're at in their career mm. and uh, take the chance when it offers itself. Uh, you know, if there's a job uh, opening at a certain spot, um, you're going to regret not applying for it down the road uh, when someone else gets that job and you see how much success they're having and the impact that they're having on the community in that position. Uh, so 75-year-old Sam would tell 24-year-old Sam, take the chances when they come up and never stop learning from the people who you respect as professionals and people. Cool. I love that, man. Um, what's one of your greatest pieces of advice since a, uh, I'm going to consider you young yet or on the lower tier of young? Um, but what's your, you know, coming out of college, you were, you were ready to go. You know, what's your greatest, if you gave one, one piece of advice, it's like, take this in college? Uh, one piece of advice uh, for college students particularly is um, don't overlook the community in which you're getting your education. Obviously, UND and Northland are great workforce funnels uh, for Grand Forks as a community. They bring people here. And then yeah. the purpose of DGFYP and other organizations is con to convince them to stay here. Uh, sometimes it's fashionable for students to trash on Grand Forks, especially if they come from the Twin Cities area or sure. elsewhere. Uh, we're in Grand Forks. There's nothing to do here. This is so boring. Why did I come to school here? Sometimes that can be fashionable, but I'm going to coin your term of unfollow the herd, you yeah. know, and, uh, you know, be an ambassador for Grand Forks, you know, get involved, talk to leaders in the community, be that person who wants to attend events that are happening through GGFYP or there's always exciting events happening downtown or at the Alera Center or at the Ralph Engelstead Arena. Uh, so my advice for those students who like to think that it's fashionable to bash on the community that they're getting their education in yeah. is uh, give it a shot before you start talking trash about it. Uh, get to know some of the people who help make up the social infrastructure of the community in which you're getting your education in and, uh, you know, dive in, get to know everyone. And uh, after four years, if you still don't like the community, great, you have your education and you can go use mm -hmm. it somewhere else, but at least give it a shot. And then yeah. I, I have a feeling that people who give it a shot and get to know people and attend events will feel affectionate towards Grand Forks and East Grand Forks and want to stay here and want yeah. to raise a family here, want to buy a home here, et cetera. Yeah. I, th I think there's a lot of people that end up, they, they'll move away 
Mm-hmm. And then they'll end up coming back. Like I even think like Bochinski, like he wanted to come back and be the mayor. It's like, you want to come, you know, you can probably go anywhere at this point. Right. Um, so that was kind of inspiring. And there's other hockey players that are around here and they just, they love coming back home. It's like, that's their, that's their piece. And, and, uh, yeah, you can drive across town in 15 minutes and, <laughs> and it, it, you don't know, drive yourself crazy. So there's a lot of upsides to Grand Forks, a um, uh, little quieter, a um, little less going on, maybe, but you, you can see it as a negative. You can see it as a positive. If you're really young, you're like, oh, I want to go to the hippest place possible, <laughs> you know, is what it is. Uh, believe me, when you have a family, it's going to be short-sighted and you're going <laughs> to wish you had a really good career uh, in a great place to raise a family, which I think is Grand Forks is, is one of the better ones. So, um, well, you answer this as a young professional, but let's answer this as Sam. Um, what does unfollow the herd mean to you? Unfollow the herd would be uh, not necessarily going along with the status quo, um, you know, in terms of wealth bit building strategies, right? You know, uh, the 401k is kind of the status quo. Uh, I kind of, my eyes were opened when you spoke at our Lunch and Learn last week. So thanks again for coming and speaking yeah. to our members. Um, people who attended that event are still talking about it, right? And, okay. you know, talking about your LinkedIn page and all the <laughs> advice that you offer on there. Yeah, it's trying. Great. Yeah, if you're in Grand Forks and if you don't follow uh, Mark Kuhn on LinkedIn, are you actually on LinkedIn is my question. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, <laughs> I found you by now. So uh, unfollow the herd is, yeah, just going against the status quo. Uh, sometimes it is beneficial to go with the status quo, right? You know, there's mm-hmm. some things that are best to, to go along with as a professional um, how you dress in professional settings, mm-hmm. how you act, you know, sometimes it's good to just kind of go with the conventional wisdom in that regard. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's best to unfollow the herd in terms of where you're going in your career, how you manage your finances, um, how you manage your organization, you know, just, uh, the most dangerous saying out there is this is how things have been done in the past. Yeah. And, uh, that's something that I, uh, I cringe when I hear it because it's worked in the past. Uh, the past might be 2012 We're in 2023 right now. Yeah. It's fine something that works right now, uh, whether it's a wealth building strategy, whether it's strategies to get people to attend events. Uh, let's think of things that work right now in uh, 2023, as opposed to how things may have worked back in 2012. I love it, man. No, that was good. That was good. Well, how do we hear more about Sam, the GGYP? How do we, how do we figure where do we find you guys? Yeah, you can stay up to date with us on all the traditional social media sites. Uh, GGFYP stands for Greater Grand Forks Young Professionals. That's the handle on all of our social medias. Uh, you can find out about us on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and then also on our website at ggfyp.com. Uh, it's there where you can officially register as a member uh, on our membership registration form. And when you do that, that automatically enrolls you in our newsletter that gets sent out on a oh, weekly basis. Cool. And that keeps our members up to date as to when our committee meetings are, when our events are. And then we also like to promote all the happenings that are taking place in Grand Forks as well uh, to kind of fight against the adage that there's nothing to do in Grand Forks, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, and yeah, so ggfyp.com, you can register for all of our events, register as a member, and then on all the social media sites as well. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, so if you're a young professional in the town of Grand Forks, guys, there is stuff to do here. They're making things to do and you will network with some, some, well, there might even be your future job at this place. And I'm just saying that get out of your comfort zone, go and apply at this page. This is not much money. Uh, if it changes your entire career path and you get a six figure job because of Sam, then, you know, he did his job and he, <laughs> he feels, uh, uh, great about it. So anyway, make sure you go and go and apply. It, it might be uncomfortable the first time, but it was, just like I was at home on the lunch and learn, I kind of got to shake everybody's hand. It was, it was a good time and it's laid back. I, I love that part of it. So, um, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate you, Sam. Thank you. We'll, uh, we'll talk in the next one. See you guys.